Here on Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, a new investigation by The New York Times exposes the financial schemes at the root of the New York City taxi driver crisis. The report reveals that a group of industry leaders artificially inflated the cost of taxi medallions and orchestrated a predatory lending scheme, collecting millions of dollars in the process and putting many drivers into debilitating debt. City agencies did little to curb the system, which a Harvard professor was quoted in the report called modern-day indentured servitude. In response to The Times report, Mayor Bill de Blasio said Monday the city would launch an investigation into the predatory practice of taxi medallion brokers. New York State Attorney General Letitia James announced her office is also initiating investigation. While the advent of rider apps like Uber and Lyft contributed to a loss of income for licensed taxi drivers, the investigation finds the taxi medallion bubble helped lay the groundwork for the current driver crisis. At least eight drivers have died by suicide, including three taxi medallion owners, since the start of 2018, with at least some of the drivers linking to their um, crushing debt. To more, we go to now. Uh, we're joined by the story's author, the investigative reporter Brian Rosenthal. Welcome to Democracy Now. Thanks An for incredible me. expose. Every day, another investigation is being launched based on your original report. Um, Brian, just lay out what you found. Basically, we found a financial bubble in the taxi medallion industry, uh, very similar to the um, obviously much larger uh, bubble in the real estate industry. And we found that uh, the price of these medallions, that's the permit that's required to operate a cab in New York City, had grown from 200,000 in 2002 up to over a million by 2014 even though there hadn't been any change in what the cab could generate on the road. And we found that the reason for that was really people in the industry, industry leaders, artificially inflating the price, and then making hundreds of millions of dollars by uh, providing these reckless loans to drivers interested in buying medallions. And, uh, interestingly, uh, you noted that it was under first Mayor Bloomberg and Mayor de Blasio that the city actually made a lot of money off increasing the controlled number of, of medallions, right? I think it was about 1,000 under Bloomberg, another 1,000 or so under uh, de Blasio. And, interestingly, de Blasio himself had huge campaign contributions from the taxi, uh, the yellow cab industry, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's one of the things that's really interesting about this asset, as opposed to real estate or anything else. This is something that was sold by the city. And we found that the city actually knew that the prices were inflated, but still sold these medallions at these very high prices. Uh, between Bloomberg and de Blasio, they made uh, more than $855 million off of these medallion sales. And, uh, yeah, we did find a lot of political connections between the industry and not just uh, Bill de Blasio, but also um, Governor Cuomo and uh, Senator Alphonse D'Amato, who was responsible for some of this back in the day. Um, we've, we found that the taxi industry is one of the more politically connected industries, and it's really used that influence. I want to turn to a clip from The Weekly. This is one of the taxi drivers that you profiled in your New York Times piece. This is Mohammed Hussein. I, I bought a medallion from the, city, from the city. I think city will help me, you know. I see on that. <laughs> I, 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 I know so many drivers, they kill themselves. But I have a family, I have my family. So I don't want to kill myself. My life is more important for my family. I love my family than medallion. That's Mohammed Hussein. Tell us more about him and tell us about the root of this problem. He is one of those people that bought a medallion at an auction. Um, he was uh, unlucky enough to buy at the final uh, auction, um, and he thought that he was making a decision that was going to not just improve his life, but improve his family's life for generations to come. He paid? He paid $890,000. Um, he got a loan for the vast majority of that, uh, but he did pour his life savings into the POTUS, and now he is underwater and, and can't pay that back. Could you talk about the uh, the racial aspect of this, the changing demographics of the taxi industry, just as increasing people from Asia and uh, uh, a lot of Indians and Pakistanis became taxi drivers and medallion owners was when the predatory practices sort of skyrocketed? 
Yeah, I mean, if you look back in history, the taxi driver in New York used to be kind of an, a classic New Yorker. I think we have this image from the, uh, the TV show uh, Taxi, um, which is before my time. But um, in recent years, 91 percent of taxi drivers were born outside the United States. Uh, 40 percent of them were born in uh, so South Asia. But that was a factor that really contributed to this, because a lot of the people that were buying these medallions did not speak English fluently, um, did not necessarily understand what they were signing up for, and that left them vulnerable. Can you talk about those that have benefited, being similar to, as you've said, or perhaps the same as those who benefited from the housing market crash in 2008 and 9? Yeah, we found a lot of similarities. Um, similar lenders uh, issuing the loans, uh, but also the lending practices themselves. Um, these no down payment loans, uh, these balloon loans where there's a teaser rate that looks good at first, but it's going to cost you later, um, and these interest only loans, and, and really a lot of practices that created a lot of profits for banks, but were very risky. And what about the impact of uh, Uber and Lyft and the black car industry? Because clearly there are about 13,000 yellow cabs in New York, but there are more than 60,000, as I understand, of black cabs and, and others that are doing a, a working for Lyft or Uber and these others. What impact did that have on the ability of these drivers to be able to get sufficient money to pay off these medallions? Yeah, it's had an impact, no doubt about it. Uh, but one of the things we found in our story was it's actually had a smaller impact than you might think. Um, part of the reason is why uh, is that 97 percent of taxi rides are either in core of midtown Manhattan or at the airports. And the majority of Uber and Lyft are in the outer boroughs. So if you look at the revenue per cab, it's only down by about 10 percent since Uber and Lyft came. But the problem is, is that they were operating on such a thin margin, and it was so unsustainable and so unstable already that even that relatively small revenue drop led to this huge catastrophe. Mm. Uh, talk about the investigations. Now, Letitia James, the New York Attorney General, Bill de Blasio, the uh, city mayor, what will these uh, investigations do? Well, it's still very early, so we're not exactly sure. But uh, the attorney general has said that she's going to look uh, at the lending practices um, and see if they violated any uh, laws related to predatory lending. Uh, and the mayor has said that he's going to look at the brokers, which is the area that he can control the most, um, and see if they engaged in any uh, predatory lending practices in arranging these loans. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here, Brian Rosenthal. We're going to do part two of our discussion uh, and post online at democracynow.org. Brian Rosenthal, investigative reporter for The New York Times. His report on the New York City taxi medallion scam is headlined, They Were Conned, How Reckless Loans Devastated a Generation of Taxi Drivers. And that does it for our broadcast. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. This is Democracy Now!